Welcome to the Third Generation Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Eric and Rob. Welcome back, everybody, to the Third Generation Wrestling Podcast, 3GW, back in the building. It's been a little bit since... The ambassador graced us with his presence, but we are here with the real Big E. And, of course, Rob, the ambassador, how's it going, man? Had a little breaky break for you, but yeah, what's man, going good. on? Yeah, it's good. I think, uh, what was it, uh, Elimination Chamber post-show? Last no, we did something after that. Oh, okay. So it hasn't been too long. No, not too long, no. It's been going good. You know, WrestleMania season well underway. Uh some good with it, some bad with it. I guess that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah. Um, kind of going to get back on that road. And I know Raw last night was had some insight. And even, even SmackDown last week was kind of, you know, eventful and everything. They're really doing the slow burn with that whole bloodline thing. Um, uh, before we get there, I think it's important. I got to backdrop up. So, Miz comes out. He's got this whole announcement he needs to make. Uh, he, I guess he had talked about it last week, and he came out this week. And, of course, annoying-ass Corey Graves is hyping it up. And uh, I actually was intrigued because he said he had a celebrity guest coming on the show. I said, oh. And then he said it's gonna be the he's gonna be the host of WrestleMania. I said, oh, okay, well, who y'all got? I'm, I'm actually thinking... It's gonna be a celebrity, right? And yeah, no, it's him. And then I said, you know what? That's about right because you ain't got nothing else to go on. <laughs> no, man, he really don't. And I do like the Miz, even though I think his act is kind of starting to wear thin. He's just become kind of a joke. But he'll make a good host. But yeah, like you, I was kind of hoping it was a bigger celebrity name, but that doesn't always work out. The Miz knows the business and, you know, man, he, he's a good host. People like him. People hate him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or love to hate him. He'll he'll be all right. He'll do all right. Yeah, I think he'll be a good host. I mean, he, he, he as you can see tonight with, well, last night, interaction with Seth, he can be a host that could take some bumps. I mean, th- I mean, we had New Day host. We've had Alexa Bliss host. So it's not a, you know, Hollywood, Miz, it's, it's a, if it it's, it makes sense to me, essentially. Uh, I know we had talked at first, and I, I'll admit I had some reservations about this match, and I wasn't sure. But. I think I got sold on it a little, a little bit more. I think I, I think I'm buying into it now. The whole uh, idea of this uh, Brock Lesnar and Omos match. Uh, at first, I was kind of like, "That's out of nowhere." But then, once MVP sold on the whole seven foot three, four hundred pound giant going against Brock Lesnar, and then picturing in my mind those two face to face, Omos is gonna make Brock look small, and that's not an easy thing to do. So, um, I've kind of gone from being like, I don't really want to see that to intrigued because, like, yeah, are you going to be able to suplex him? Are you going to be able to F5 this guy? Because that's kind of how I became into the wrestling with, you know, my growing up, my favorite was Goldberg, and he was like, he could pick up anybody, he could pick up the giant, he could pick up Kevin Nash. So, that was always the thing, like, can he pick up these? And he did. So, from that perspective, I started looking at this match and go, it's not going to be a barn burner, but it's going to be a spectacle to see if Brock can pick up Omas with any type of, you know, offense. So I think it's interesting, and it's 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 a it's a fresh match for Brock at Mania, and it'll ele- no matter what it'll elevate Omas. Yeah, I'm somewhat intrigued. I was more excited about some of the rumors I had heard about Brock maybe taking on Gunther. Uh, I thought that would have been a great match. But 
the size difference between he and Omas, I kind of thought we would get a look at that last night. I thought they would come face to face last night, but you know what? I think they may want to save that for Mania just so that we we see it in that moment and see just exactly how big of a difference it is because Omas is going to dwarf Brock and make him look very small. Mm-hmm. Yeah, will he be able to suplex him? Will he be able to have five in? Uh, for me, what's also more intriguing is that is Brock at the stage in his career where he's willing to put someone like Omas over? Or is this just another sacrificial lamb being fed to Brock to continue making him look strong? How are they going to go with it? I, I would prefer to see Omas get over, but look, we are talking Brock. Uh, he he seems to only be willing to get certain types of wrestlers over. We even saw at the Elimination Chamber when Bobby almost had him beat with the Hurt Lock, Brock had to cheat to win, had to hit him low, not to win, but to get disqualified. So, yeah, man, I'm curious to see how that all plays out. So, like you, I, I'm more intrigued than I was when I originally heard about it. To be fair, though, Brock did take the L last year at Royal Rumble, and even though he won the match at what, Crown Jewel, Bobby beat the brakes off of him. And then after the match, he beat him down some more. And the thing with Brock is that I've taken away from him is he won't sell for somebody if he doesn't like them. So outcome of the match is one thing, but if he's selling for you, that means he at least believes in you. He believes in the story. And he said he said it yesterday. He's a man of business. He's a businessman, and this is a, a good business move. I don't know what that means for the outcome of the match, but like I said, I think either way, Omas comes out looking strong because he's facing these big names. So uh, I hope so. I hope so. You know, I'm trying to think of the last time I saw Brock take a clean loss. You know, obviously to Goldberg, uh, he lost to Roman. He lost yeah. to Roman. Uh, well, it's hard, hard to say that it was clean with Roman because he always got the bloodline. Yeah, and they, you know, buried him under all the chairs and the bloodline. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying is, you know, is he going to just put Omas over completely, let, let Omas get over clean? That would really elevate Omas if he did that. Man, I'm trying to think. The last person to beat Brock clean? It was probably Roman. It was probably Roman, but I, and with, this is like before Tribal Chief Roman, I think. The old vest wearing Roman, I think he beat him clean. And then before that, yeah, you had to go back to Goldberg. So yeah, it's not often. It's not often at all. Um, so we got some new WWE. Women's tag team champions <laughs> got Becky Lynch and Lita with the assistance of Trish Stratus. Um, so it's looking like I, I kind of saw the rumor about this. So originally it was supposed to be Damage Control, Dakota Kai, EO Sky versus Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. And I had already read that they were switching gears to make it. Becky Lynch and Lita versus Ronda and Shayna. So it looks like this is the way that it's going. Um, I like it. Uh, you know, raise the raise the bar. Put your big names and and, and elevate those titles. Really elevate them. Um, make them mean something. I, not that Damage Control is doing a terrible job, but I think EO Sky was not EO Sky. I think Dakota Kai was hurt, so she could they couldn't wrestle. Uh, they couldn't defend the title, so it's like, well, if you're hurt, I'm sorry, you, you got to drop the title. So that's just how that's gonna have to go. Um, and I think somewhere along the line, damage control lost some steam. Uh, you know, it's when you're a champion, but you're losing on TV. That that takes away your credibility. Even if it's a singles match, you shouldn't be losing. Look at the bloodline. I mean, they don't they don't lose on on TV. You know, rarely do they lose on TV. Should I say? Um, but uh, and it makes me wonder: Are they gonna do what? What? What the hell they do with Bailey though? Is they do? They're gonna do Bailey versus Trish? You know, I was gonna ask that. We saw Trish Stratus come in last night. Uh, Bailey was wearing, obviously, as as you assume she would. 
uh, to help damage control. So from out of nowhere, here comes Trish Stratus, and she ends up helping Becky and Lita get the victory and the title. So yeah, my first thought is that, okay, so now are we going to see a, a, a three-on-three at Mania? But now after what you're telling me tonight, and I have heard those rumors about Ronda and Shayna, so yeah, I guess maybe we're looking at a singles match between Trish and Bailey. That's the only way I can see that it goes. They got to give Bailey something. She missed last year. Did she miss? Yeah, she missed last year and the year before. She wasn't on Mania either. So they got to give her something. Yeah, I, you know, I wonder what our uh, dear departed book would think. You know, they haven't really done a lot with Bailey since she's been back. She's mainly just been kind of the manager and mouthpiece for damage control, but she's only had a few matches uh, of her own. She's had a couple of title matches. I think she had a, a, some matches against Bianca, but it just doesn't seem like they're really trying to do anything with her as an individual. Now, with damage control losing the titles, maybe that changes. But, uh, yeah, it just seems like, they really haven't been trying to get Bailey for real back in the title. Well, I can tell you, Book would be pissed off right now because he's like, well, what, he'd be, what the fuck? Why doesn't Bailey have a match? This is ridiculous. And I actually agree with him because it's like, well, especially the fact that she missed the last two matches. She was, it wasn't last year, there last year because of her ACL. The year prior, when Book, when y'all all were here, she was on the show. Just didn't have a match. Yeah, which was just so it's like two years and Bailey hasn't been on the show. Uh, it's just, you gotta give her something, you know. So I, I'm curious to see. I, I'd be there for that. I would love to see her and Trish have a match. That'd be great. I think that'd be great. I'm not as excited about the tag team match. The thought, first of all, I guess, is Lita just holding the titles for uh, Shayna and Ronda because I, I don't know if he's gonna be around that long. But if they carry the titles to Mania and they fight Ronda and Shayna, I'm almost certain they would. Ronda and Shayna would win that. I don't know, man. I I I, I like Shayna and I like Ronda, but I just first of all, I just don't think Shayna is very good in the ring. I've said that, and but look, at least they're trying to do something with her. At least they're trying to get her in a spot where look, it's kind of like sink or swim. If if we put the straps on you, you're a champion. And we're tagging you with Rhonda, you know, make it work. I want. What happened? What's the disconnect? Because she was NXT Women's Champ for a very long time. She had some good matches, like a lot of good matches. A couple. It was that it, when she was in NXT, she had a bad match. We didn't blame her. We blamed her opponent. And that did happen a couple of times. She's had bad opponents and it didn't work. But it was never Shayna's fault. And the the uh, uh, the War Games match that we saw, she was the champ still, and and that match was great. I don't know what the disconnect is, or if they're changing her around or whatever, but I still think they can they can there's there's still something there that they can mold this thing of ball of clay called Shayna Baszler. I, I I don't think it's too late. I think they can still do something with her. But I know WWE also has that mentality of, you know, once you hit 40, they don't really try to push you too hard because we got to focus on younger talent. But uh, I don't know. I, I think it's an intriguing match. I think that could – which leads me to my next topic was um, could you see one of the women's matches main eventing night one? We know it's going to main event night two. But – Night one, could you see one of these, either the women's, well, they're all women's title matches. Could you see one of those women's title matches main eventing night one? Well, definitely not the uh, tech team match. I don't uh main eventing. I mean, if you're talking like Bianca and Asuka, then yeah, I could, that main eventing. If you're talking Charlotte versus Rhea, I could definitely see that main eventing, uh, but not that tag match. <laughs> you don't seem to be a fan of that at all. No, man, like I said, I, I just, uh, I, and I feel like I'm bashing on Shayna. I'm not, man. I really like her. It's just, like I said, man, she just hasn't gotten it done in the ring. She's been there a few years. You know, it doesn't help when they bring her in to the main roster, and the first thing she does is attack Becky and challenge her at Mania. So you start her off right at the top fighting the 
the top female in the company at the time. And like yeah, a, they had like, her like doing some fam vampire shit. Had her yeah, biting her and and her mouth around blood around her mouth and everything. I actually thought that was okay because look, you had to create heat for you know you bring her up and you have to create some kind of heat because the people who watch NXT knows who she is and the people who watch UFC knows who she is. But you know a lot of fans didn't even know who she was. So you bring her up, you put her in that spot. Of course. Becky gets over. So from there, I don't know. And then, you know, you have her with uh, Nia Jax. I, I guess that worked for a little bit. But just something about Shayna, just her promos don't really grab me. And like I said, she just doesn't move right in the ring. Her chair timing seems to be off. And I, sometimes when she throws a punch, you can tell she's not really trying to throw it. Do you know what I mean? She just, she moves tentative and just kind of funny in the ring. And in NXT, like you, I agree. She was great in NXT. Why it doesn't translate on the main roster, I don't know. You know what? She has something in common with another wrestler that I just can't understand why. And he 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 has less of an excuse. I can give Shayna the the pass because I've said it. It's it's it, when you're a UFC fighter, MMA fighter, and that's all you've ever done. It's 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 probably harder. Then it looks to take stuff, something off of your kicks and your strikes. Um, she's been doing it for years now. She now, now, yeah. I, I just, I'm just, that. That's the only thing I would give her. Karen Cross, however, has never been in the MMA. It's like fighting, fighting, like legit. Has he? Does he probably go to a dojo and do all that kind of stuff? Sure. But he operates the same way he moves so slow his strikes are slow he runs slow that's where he loses me in these matches and yeah i would dare say she's better than him at this point <laughs> well you know they're putting her in a title match so they must think more of her than him but i was oh. never know this i was never a fan of cross even in nxt you know they they he was him. he he was he was ten times better in NXT than he is now, and to me still not very good. I just never thought his character was believable. I never bought him as this badass. Um, and then so he comes to the main roster, and I admit they did not do him any favors when they brought him to the main roster and gave him that stupid mask. Uh, they didn't bring Scarlet with him. Well, now Scarlet is with him. He grew his hair out. He doesn't strike keep one. Huh? Strike one. Right, he doesn't keep himself in the best shape. Strike two. <laughs> I'm, I just don't buy the character. I just don't. And then, you look, you've got him feuding with Ray. He is a future Hall of Famer. That, that's a nice spot for him to be in. But he just somehow he's just not making it work. Visuals. Visuals. Karen Cross is 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, Ray is 5'6". Come on, the casual fan. I know Ray's a legend. Size does not matter for us. I'm just saying for the casual viewer. Come on, man. What are you really? What are you accomplishing by facing Ray, who's older than you? He, Ray has you by at least five years, probably more than that, and he's significantly smaller than you. Like this is just not good. Well, that's fair. Now they also did have him in a program with McIntyre and. That didn't work. That didn't either. work either. See, it's it's like they need to find a medium film. It's like we well, we put you in McIntyre, which was he, with at the time he was like t not top dog, but second to the top dog. Feuding with just got done feuding with Roman, or was currently feuding with Roman actually. So the when when Cross debuted, he attacked Drew, and Drew was in the middle of a feud with Roman. So they made people think that Cross was actually going to be involved with Roman and when that didn't happen it dropped his stock and it's a point that you have made and this is the this is the best example that we're gonna get where if you bring somebody in and you start them at the top that you can only go down had they started him with someone like I don't know it like a Baron Corbin, if you brought Cross back, even though Baron Corbin's a heel too. But if you brought somebody on Baron Corbin's level, if you brought him back and he attacked somebody like that, he had worked the program and then you built him up. 
that would have worked. It's really hard to come in. Lacey Evans is another example because and and I, I tried to support that cause, but this recent comeback is is not working. And once again, they bring her back for a while, and now she's gone again. They just can't seem to figure out what they want to it's do. It's not with. working. The crowd does not move when she comes out. They don't care. At least the old character could would talk on the mic and work the crowd, and that worked. This sergeant, this female sergeant slaughter thing. No. No. She's and when they brought her to the main roster, immediately put her in the title picture, and that was Vince. I hate to be, I hate to be in J Book, but that was Vince. Yeah. So, like I said, man, her cross, you know, get cross in a program with somebody like Riddick Moss. They're not really doing anything with him, but th- that could be something that might work if you if you really believe in Cross and you really want to elevate him. Moss is somebody that would work. You know why that would work? Because Cross has Scarlett, Moss has uh, Emma. They could play some serious mind games and elevate both of them at the same time. That would work. I think that would work. That would actually work. And you could redeem them both. Um... And I know, I know, I, I'm like you. I wanted to see Brock versus Gunther because I thought two reasons. I thought you could elevate the IC title by having Brock Lesnar going for it because he's never gone for that title. When they brought him in when he was a rookie, he went straight for the WWE Championship. And I truly, truly believe he would put Gunther over. And you would seriously elevate that IC title. If Gunther beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, people wanted that match. I say it all the time. Royal Rumble, that's what it's good for. Those face-offs, you got to deliver those matches. He didn't have a face-off with Bray and, and, and Bobby Lashley. He didn't have a face-off with Omos and Brock Lesnar. He didn't. Maybe if he did, because they're both in the Rumble, maybe we would have got that. But you gave us the the uh, uh Gunther and, and Brock face off. So I I think a lot of people are disappointed. And I think that's probably also where the disappointment comes from with the All Moss match because you gave us that visual of Brock and Gunther. Had they not done that, maybe people wouldn't, but I think that a lot of people were thinking that that's, that's the direction they were going to go. Yeah, I agree. And I don't know, like you, uh, you, you think Brock would have put him over. I'm hoping that the reason why they decided not to go with it is because Brock wasn't willing to, to put him over. At this point, I just don't know where Brock is. But he is in that point in his career where I think he should put people over. You know, that's what you do when you're you're getting older in the business and you don't have many years left. You know, you give back a little bit. You say, okay, I had all these guys. Look, take her, let you take his streak, okay? So now, man. Let's see you get over some of the younger talent. I really haven't seen Brock. Look, we, we just mentioned it. The only people we can recall seeing Brock lose too clean are Roman and Goldberg. Well, Goldberg's already a made man. Even at that stage in his career, Roman was. But what have you done, Brock, to elevate the younger talent, the talent that is going to follow your path? Yeah. That's my... You know, and, and him and Goldberg, were they boys. So that was easy <laughs> to do and he's faced Roman so many times Jesus Christ oh man I, yeah I I think we they told us at SummerSlam that that was the final meeting between those two I just hope that is true yeah now um, in regard to her, it does look like he's going to take on McIntyre I'm curious your take on that one I, 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 I hate to be a downer because I do think that's a good match it makes it 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 on paper, yes, it makes sense. Okay, yes, it does. I guess with it's the same thing. I just wanted to see Brock do it. I guess, and I don't I don't like the this thing with him and Sheamus. The banger after banger after banger. I like Drew the most when he was a heel, when he was 
not necessarily NXT Drew McIntyre, but even after he came back, he he was a badass. They turned him babyface. Uh, he's been babyface so long. He could turn. Maybe they'll do it. I don't know, but if he ever does turn on Sheamus, he, he that will make him a, a giant heel. But I know they have to have baby faces, and they're trying. To, they have a really hard time booking baby faces. It's not all their fault because the crowd, if the crowd really has to buy into them to be baby faces. Right now, you got two, Cody, uh, Cody Rhodes and Sami Zayn are two biggest baby faces in the whole company. And I really, they've done a really good job because the crowd has not turned on Cody, even though Sammy was so over the last couple of weeks. The crowd still is behind Cody. So kudos to them for being able to keep people invested in seeing Roman versus Cody. Um, Not to get my boy Seth freaking Rollins, though. The crowd's still loving him right now. That's because <clears throat> that's because Seth Freakin' Rollins keeps coming out and stomping the hell out of the Miz. That's one. <laughs> Two, I think we all know that Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul is probably gonna steal the show, whatever night that it's on. Um Logan Paul has proved that he can do it, he can go. I don't really agree with what he was doing at his brother's fight, talking shit. I don't I think WWE should have kind of Reined him in a little bit, like, hey man, we can't have you doing that kind of stuff. Calling, uh, uh what's his name? F- Tyson Fury's brother was it? Uh, oh, t- uh, Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury, calling the family, calling the families bitches and all that stuff. Like, come on, like, Tyson Fury has worked with WWE. Like, come on, like, <sighs> okay. But yeah, we all know that that's going to be a great match. Um, what else did I have here? So I guess the biggest thing is the fact. That, oh well, before I can go there, all right. We were all wondering because Bray Wyatt said whoever whichever one of you walks out from that match that's who I'm pretty much coming from you should run and Lashley beats Elias which is stop booking people against Elias we already know what the outcome is going to be and it's going to be quick and easy he put as soon as he got Elias in the hurt lock he tapped it was ridiculous um so much so that the crowd is usually always behind Bobby in his matches, at least interacting with, with it. And it was just like, it's Elias. Like, we know you're going to beat Elias. You have gone toe-to-toe with Brock Lesnar, and he's supposed to come out here against Elias, and I'm supposed to care. No. And I like Bobby's promo. Like, I don't do kitty games. I don't do this bullshit. You know, it, that's probably what he really wanted to say. Like, I'm not with this shit. You know, don't even bother. And he's walking off the ramp, and then we get the muscle man dance from from from. <laughs> I know. As uh, soon as I saw, I was like, "Ooh, I know Rob's hating this." But well, man, does that get you excited for the match? I mean, watching Bray, you know, do some silly shit like that. Does that, you know, what I mean? Does no, I would have preferred. I would have preferred just Bobby going off the ramp. Lights go out. You got Uncle Howdy behind him, Bray Wyatt in front of him. And just attack the man. That would get me invested because y'all getting physical. But yeah, the video package, nah, not so much. I mean, I, I it doesn't work. Like Bobby's always been all about business. The hurt business, he's about fighting. He's and, and I'm curious to see how they pull this off. I really um to me, this is the biggest reach of them all. This is a bigger reach than than uh, uh Brock Lesnar and Omas. This is a huge reach to me. I think it's pretty easy. I think Bray gets over. I think Bobby takes takes the L to Bray. If if that's the problem with these characters of Bray's, when when he loses, that really does damage to the character. Remember when he was the fiend and he came out against Rollins and Rollins beat him. And remember how uh, what a disaster that was. He didn't even beat him. They called the match off. Well, yeah, okay. Call, well, yeah. See, so it wasn't even a loss, and people were still pissed because the fiend didn't win. 
So well, the Fiend's never coming back, according to him. Well, okay. I mean, it's look. To me, there's not much difference in the character he's doing now and the Fiend, except he's not wearing mm-hmm. the mask. The puppets are still there. The Funhouse is still there. It's not too far removed from what he was doing. It's kind of the same character. I, I, you know, you have more tolerance for it than I do. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. I wish Bray would just go back to the old Bray Wyatt that we all know. Maybe bring back Rowan. I don't know if he's doing anything, but this stuff with Uncle Howdy showing up and first he was beating Bray down. Now he's he's uh, helping Bray out, and then sometimes Bray is in the fun house, and then t- Monday he's doing the the muscle man dance. I'm over all of it, man. I'm over <laughs> it. It, it's I'm sorry, man. It's just it's silly. I keep going back to the word silly and dumb. I don't like it. I think Bray is better than that. I think it's a waste of his talent. I do that, like though, and you probably got like to. They are calling it out. Like it's like L.A. Knight did it. Uh, last he did, I don't do kitty games. L.A. Knight was talking about the puppets and all that stuff. Um, so the, it is at least grounded this time in realism. Like yeah, you, you're doing this. They're calling it out at the very least. Um, I guess you just have to take the character. The character is 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 insane, and you have to kind of interpret what he based on his promos, which is really hard. That's why I said earlier in in, in the group, I was like, it's been inconsistent because there's some weeks he comes out. He for for months he came out and just said how. He wasn't able to be himself. And that's all he ever talked about. I can't be myself. I can't be myself. And Uncle Howdy would interrupt him. So essentially, that was him saying, I haven't been able to control my demons. Now I'm in control of them. Okay, cool. Um, Just be intimidating. I think if you're trying to take the... the Undertaker essentially passed the torch to you to be the new face of fear. I'm sorry, but muscle man is not the way to go about that. If you're going to do it, let's go out. Like I said, use Uncle Howdy. I don't care if you use Uncle Howdy, but put the beat down on him. He's not, Bobby Lash is not going to be scared of you in a tank top. You need to put the beat, put, put, the, get physical, put the beating on. This is, it's still wrestling. So put your hands on the man and make people care about it. Because if you get physical, you, it, if you're going to play my games, play the mind games. Hey, you know what? If they're going to do this, get real. Because when Bobby Lassie first came back to WWE, they put him in a lot of shit. The sisters, Lana, all that stuff. If you're going to bring all that back up, then maybe this will work and you can play those mind games. But if you're not, then you need to be physical. Period. I'm with you. The thing I will say about the program between Bray and LA Knight is we did see face to face between them. We did see physicality between them. So that kind of helped to elevate that match. And even though LA Knight took the loss in that one, I I thought he still came away with from it looking okay. And I'm hoping that they're going to do something with him for mania. Right. But they've got to do something with Bray and Bobby, but the muscle man dance is not the way to go about it. So I'm hoping that look, we're still what five weeks away from mania a lot of time to build to these matches. I'm, I'm So I'm not going to kill it completely right now, but I really wish Bray would move away from the fun house in our group chat. I thought Randy burned that shit down. <laughs> no, thought- that was that was Sister Abigail's uh, cabin that he burned down. I mean, I, okay. I could have swore it was a fun house, but okay. But yeah, we'll just have to look. I'm running out of patience, but let's just see how it plays out leading up to Mania and, and how the match plays out. But I'm already predicting a win for Bray. You can't Where have is this- Alexa Bliss? You know, man, I don't know. She hasn't been around. I haven't heard anything. I don't know why she just disappeared. Her and Lily, I don't know. And that's another thing about this whole thing with Bray. Everybody was assuming that maybe we'd see a faction. Maybe we'd, we, you know, remember we used to see those vignettes with Alexa Bliss? And we'd see the, yeah. the the background would just change, like like Bray stuff would just pop up, right? Yeah, so it looked like they were doing something with that. Well, what happened? 
Alexa's just disappeared. I mean, on the road to WrestleMania, we have no Alexa Bliss right now. Yeah, it was supposed to be the Wyatt Six because of the, you know, the characters in the Funhouse. And everybody thought that everybody, when he first came back at Extreme Rules, everybody thought that there was, those weren't just random people dressed up in his, on those costumes. They were actually people that were going to be a part of his faction. And he would slowly reveal them over time. Uncle Howdy, Ramblin' Rabbit, uh, Huskus, um, uh, what's it, the buzzard? Can't think of the name of the buzzard. And, and you know, Abigail, and then Uncle Howdy. So, none of that's happened. Uh, I don't know. Just, and I, I said it the wrong, they had to tie some of this shit up. They did, but they, excuse me, they did, but they didn't. I don't know. I don't know. But the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, I'm going to wrap it up with this, is uh, Friday, we're going to get Cody Rhodes versus, uh, face-to-face with uh, Roman Reigns. And I honestly think that they're not going to need to say a word. Just having those two face to face, the crowd's going to go ape shit. And that's going to sell sell the match all on time. That probably will get physical, if we're being real. But just to finally get those two face to face is, is going to be really good. Uh, I'm curious to see where this whole thing goes with Jay. I'm going to assume that he gets back with the bloodline eventually within the next couple of weeks. And then you get him and Sammy, mm-hmm. him and Jimmy versus Sammy and, and KO. And uh, yeah, that that's what I can see happening. But Friday is going to be must see TV for sure. For me, SmackDown always is must see TV. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And sometimes I think less is more. All you have to do is just get Roman in the ring with Cody and just have him go face to face. They don't even have to say much. And like you said, the crowd's going to go crazy because that's what we're waiting for. You know, I'm kind of waiting for him to get past this whole thing as far as Roman's involvement with the Sammy situation and just now start to focus and build the story between him and Cody. Obviously, they're going to have words at some point. And I think these promos, both of these guys, I think, can deliver great promos. And I think that will elevate the match even more but as far as Friday night like you said if they can just come face to face you know that would be enough right there yeah it'll be interesting um a lot of stuff going on I know we didn't really get to talk about Rhea and Charlotte too much they haven't done too much no Rhea and Charlotte that's a few that that's official uh, we can pretty much count on Dominic and Ray also. Um, ben and Edge. Ben and Edge. That's probably a, a definite. I think I talked about that even at Elimination Chamber. I figured that was going to be it. I am curious. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with Karen Cross. He's probably going to end up missing WrestleMania, to be honest with you. Because I know well, Triple, Triple H's mindset is if you don't have a spot, you ain't there. Okay, but are they going to do the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? I mean, who who actually cares about that shit? I mean, nobody really, but it's a no. way to people on the card who don't really have a spot. I mean, it is Andre the Giant. There is a trophy involved. And if you're in that ro- in that battle royal, that means you ain't shit. Period. Yeah, for the last winners, I mean, what Corbin's won it? Did Moss win it once? Didn't Mojo Raw? Really, Moss won last year. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, it, I mean, but look, Triple H is running things. If you are going to do the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, it should mean something if you win it. I mean, look, Andre is the first ever WWE Hall of Famer, obviously, uh, an absolute legend. So if you're naming a battle royal after him and you're giving out a trophy in his image. I mean, make it mean something. So maybe that's something Triple H might try to do. Um, 
And, you know, I know there's some injured people that are injured and people that came back that haven't really done anything yet. But, I mean, they still got filled two nights. Right now, they only have enough matches for one night. Um, So, AJ Styles still hasn't come back yet. Randy yeah. Orton. Yeah, Matt Riddle. Uh, I don't think Riddle's going to be back. That's a whole thing. Uh, Randy Orton, there was rumored that he is trying to make a comeback. And I'm actually going to think, I'm going to say they saved Nia for the night after WrestleMania. I don't think they're going to try to shoehorn her into anything unless they do a female battle royal and she could win that. Outside of that, I don't see her doing anything. Or if she wants to <laughs> you could always put her against Chelsea Green. Hey, I, look, man, I'm enjoying Chelsea Green's uh, little backstage segments. I, I, I'm enjoying those. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why you don't like her, man. I like Chelsea. Yeah. She's cute. Well, no, man, it's not just that for me. I just think she's good in, in that role. I and mean, that's no, I, all I'm saying is she's cute and that's where it stops. <laughs> she has <laughs> never had a great <laughs> match. And any time she she is she is she is Mrs. Glass. Any time they try to push her, she gets hurt every single time. No matter the company, no matter the promotion. WWE tried to push her, she got hurt. She went to TNA, tried to push her, she got hurt. She is Miss Miss Glass. Well, look, before we go, uh one thing I want to hit on really, you know, we're both big fans. Have you heard the rumor about uh the Hall of Fame? That wasn't actually about that. I forgot to put that in my notes. Um, so they haven't really they haven't announced anything, but I'm thinking that this would be the this would definitely be the year. You gotta do Batista. That's the rumor I've heard. Now, you know, look, I'm not the inside man. And, <laughs> uh, so, uh, all I've heard is just rumor and speculation. I think a lot of people feel like we do that. That is just the obvious way to go. But yeah, man, I'm hoping that that really works out. I think that would be look, WrestleMania Hollywood, and you've got Dave Bautista, who's one of the biggest stars in Hollywood right now. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know what his schedule like, but he's very busy. Uh, but if they can if they can make that work, and he's the headliner, I think that is perfect, and it's it's awesome. Yeah, um, I think it's a no brainer. You got to do it. He wants to do it. It's just I, I I think he'll make the time to do it, honestly. And uh I will have my knock at the cabin review up shortly. Uh, I did I did I did watch it. I don't want to say too much. But uh definitely thumbs up if nothing else. Dave is an actor. He's not an action hero, he's an actor. And I think that's harder to do. How harder to pull off. Oh. He's an actor. And he really showed his chops in this movie. And he, and people, channels that I follow on YouTube have, have all said the same thing. And it's, they they don't want to compare him to Rock. But it's like, you kind of have to. I'm sorry, you just do. They both came from the same company. They both are now household names. Rock is probably always going to be just a tad bit bigger because he was the first to do it. But Dave is a better actor. There's no way around it. He has way better range. He 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 challenges himself. No, he's never done outside of Drax. He doesn't play the same character twice. And he said it. This is the last time I'm doing Drax because I don't want to be typecast. Every other character he's ever played has been different. Yeah, that's hard to argue. And and I love The Rock. I love both guys. But w when you are looking at range, I mean, Batista definitely wins on that. Uh, I have not seen Knock at the Cabin. I, I, I meant to. But just based on everything I've read, everyone is saying that he is a revelation in that movie. Oh, my God. He... <sighs> And not without saying too much, I'm not going to say it in the review, but 
M. Night Shyamalan uses his size as like part of the movie. And it's like, he looks so big. <laughs> He's significantly smaller than he was when we met him. Oh, man. With the you know age and you know he wanted to get smaller for you know to get different acting roles, he's still huge. <laughs> and it shows in the movie like he's just he's just you. I say I say this to Doc all the time. I said Doc, you can lose fifty pounds, you're still gonna be huge. You're just a huge man. That's just there's no way around it. You're just a huge man. Yeah, man. Batista is you know when you talk about because we we seen a lot of wrestlers, met a lot of wrestlers in person up close, but Batista is just the largest muscular guy I have ever seen. I've never seen arms like that, veins like that. Just just an absolutely monstrous being, you know, yeah. from a size and muscle standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. So, kudos to him. Hopefully, yeah, Hall of Fame. Um, I don't know how they're gonna do it. This whole WrestleMania being too nice thing because it used to be a Saturday night thing, but I I don't know now. I thought they handled last year very well with Undertaker. I I have a that might be the way they go, and I, I you know it's funny man. I I feel like there is an NXT card uh somewhere of uh, this there is. as well. Stand and, stand and deliver. Yeah, so they've got a lot going on. We're putting yeah. in, we're gonna be work. Like we always do, like we always do for all of you. Oh yeah, WrestleMania is is the busiest time of the year, but is the the most exciting time of the year as well. Like I'm excited because uh, I, I really if, if 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 we can't make it to the actual show, I want my guys here, and it, it it's almost better than it being there live person. But could we all. Get together, watch the matches. We do our predictions. Um, so I, I can't wait to have y'all back again. Um, hopefully, do it bigger this, doing it bigger this year. Not hopefully, we are doing it bigger this year. We're gonna do a live stream, and during the show, and we're gonna do a post show. And uh, you're coming for both nights. I already got the time off. No drill this time. Like last, like last time. Um, I got, I got Monday off, so I'll be there Saturday and taking off early Monday. Yep. Yeah, um. Shoot, that's that's. Good. I mean, it's it's creeping up on me. I got started to uh, clean up down here. Um. What else? Got some movie reviews coming out for y'all. Uh, knock, knock at the cabin being one. Um, Cocaine Bear is going to be coming soon. Uh, Creed 3 comes out Friday. I got to try to find a way to get to that. On my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creed, matter of fact, Creed 3 and Mandalorian. So everything. Uh, March 3rd this year is the big day. <laughs> this whole weekend, March 4th. John Bones Jones is back, fighting at heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all shout out the ambassador this Friday. It's his birthday. So, we got to do it. We're going we to definitely celebrate when you get here because, you know, we both March birthdays. So, we're going to definitely yeah, toast it up. Well, yeah, April 1st. Yours will have passed just a couple of days. So, Yeah. That worked out. I, I, I it's crazy because I put in those days, and I wasn't hundred percent sure about WrestleMania. So after I put the days in, I went back and looked. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm good. Okay, cool. So we will be here. We will have a good time. More food, more drinks, and I'll be. I told I told Rob he got to try that let your lemonade when he gets here. So uh... I, I try one. I'm going to pace myself, but man, I will be there. <laughs> and it's festive and the adrenaline's flowing. Uh, you know, I'll bring some aspirin. I'll be good for the whole weekend. You ain't got to bring nothing. You, you get my wife's a nurse. She got everything. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, thank you all for watching. Uh, Roll the WrestleMania. We'll probably do one more of these. Maybe combined with a prediction show. We'll see. But uh, depending on how... It really depends on how uh, events develop. 
and things of that nature. There may be some more returns between here and then. We don't know. We'll see. But we are excited. It's WrestleMania season. It's the best time to be a wrestling fan. And, uh, yeah, make sure you hit us up on those socials, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, third Generation Wrestling Podcast, Twitter, podcast on score third, TikTok, and Twitch is uh, Third Generation Wrestling Pod. I am working on using OBS and software to live stream and to make this more interactive. Give me some time because I don't want to. I don't want to start it before I know what I'm doing. But it's going to be the shows are going to be more interactive. Live streams will go to Twitch. And then video on demand will go to YouTube and the audio podcast will still keep coming like um, on your favorite podcast platforms, Apple, uh, Google, iHeartRadio, Amazon. The only one, I don't know what the deal is. Spotify don't like us for whatever reason. So we're not on Spotify. I don't know why. <laughs> it is what it is. <clears throat> so. Uh, email us also at thirdgenwrestling.gmail.com. Make sure you keep hitting that like button, subscribing, and sharing. And check out the video game streams. I'm I'm almost done with God of War. The next game, I'm going to try playing both at the same time. I know y'all voted for Gotham Knights, but Resident Evil 4 is coming out, the remake. I will be playing Resident Evil 4. Uh, it's, it's a horror game, so it's probably going to be a lot of jump scares, better graphics. The original one came out on the GameCube, which was like 2001. So now we're th- they they re released it with the new graphics. So I'm I'm excited to play it. So it's probably going to be even creepier than the last one. But uh, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Um, that's pretty much all I got for right now. So ambassador. Y'all know the drill. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Big things. You're going to hear us say that all year. Trying to do big, better things this year for y'all. And we can't do it without you. You're also going to hear me say this for the next few weeks. We're putting in work. It's WrestleMania season. Yeah. These movie reviews, doing the games. We're just, look, we're going to, we'll bring back the farts. Don't worry. The farts are going to be there too. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everything to build this thing. And we just, Love and appreciate y'all. Tell your friends. Tell everyone you know what we're doing here. Whether you like it, you don't like it. If you don't like it, let us know. Let us know what you would like. Appreciate y'all. Right on, right on. Take care, everybody. Have a great week. We'll speak to y'all again soon. And uh, take care. Peace.